He was 33, and he strangled his wife, 34-year-old uh, Shanann Watts, who was 15 weeks pregnant with their third child, who was a boy. They had two girls. They had a three-year-old daughter, Celeste, and a four-year-old daughter, Bella. And this guy, this relationship, this whole story so confuses me. Again, I've gone down the rabbit hole on this. Look at him. He's a good-looking guy. He had a job. It wasn't like a like a surgeon, like we're going to get to with Jeff McDonald. Um, he was he worked at the Weld County Oil Site, and she had a good job too. A middle class family um, had some financial problems, but not overwhelming uh, and pervasive. Had what looked like the perfect family. The neighbors in the Netflix documentary, I think it was, described them that they were saying like. I watched Chris Watts. I thought, I got to up my game as a parent. I got to spend more time with my kids. Got to get out there and throw the ball with him. Look at him. Look at this guy. He, according to the reports, was the more subservient one. I'm, I'm not sure if that's the right word, but she seemed more dominant than he did. She seemed more in control in terms of family decision-making. You know, this is where I want to live. This is what I want for the girls. This is what I want you to do. And he seemed more of like a yes man than someone who was engaging in coercive control. This is my layperson's opinion. You can take this apart in a second. That's my approach, my, my, my takeaway, watching it. Then he loses a bunch of weight. Never a good sign <laughs> in a marriage. Loses a bunch of weight and starts an affair with a coworker. And his wife, Shanann, goes away with the girls for six weeks to visit family in North Carolina. He falls for this other woman pretty hard. And we know, I think it's from his Google searches that he was Googling things like, when do you say I love you? Like, what, what does it feel like to, to be in love? It, weird searches that a normal person would not be doing that are definitely a flag. And then the wife comes back from the business trip at two in the morning. She'd been with the girlfriends on a, on a true business trip, comes back at two in the morning. And what we know is now, because he ultimately confessed, he strangled her to death. They had, a, they had a fight. They had some sort of an argument. He strangled her to death. He says he took his two daughters who were alive in the backseat of the truck over their dead mother's body, which was on the floor of the backseat, drove to the oil site, smothered his three-year-old and his five-year-old. The five-year-old said, are you going to do to me what you just did is to Cece, the three-year-old? and said, Daddy, no, it's too horrific to even really conjure. And he did it anyway. He did it anyway. And then he disposed of the daughter's bodies in the oil tanks, put one in one oil tank and one in the other. So gruesome, he could even describe the sound of their little bodies hitting the liquid and buried his wife in a shallow grave nearby. This guy who had friends who again was perceived by some as this model father who doesn't have some long criminal history. I don't get it. And I, I'm desperate to get it. Would you help me get it? Yes. And I think the way you describe it, you know, again, people should remember what he did and what he said he did too. And he has changed his narrative at least four times, but yeah. the way that he described putting their bodies into that oil tanker, I believe that version of what happened. And for us all to think about the fear and the terror that the children must feel having seen what happened. I believe Bella saw what happened to her mum, and then having this sense that these horrific things are going to happen to you at the hands of your daddy, someone who's meant to care, love you and look after you. And th those moments are just so haunting. And I think when we, th when we understand how the me media characterized him as a good father, a good dad, this, you know, perfect, dutiful husband. And of course, there were all these um, different videos of Shanann because her business was on Facebook of her and she was described as bossy and, oh, this nagging woman and too strong. And instantly we get into the victim blame and the empathy of excusing what he did. And mm. that is everything wrong with the way these cases are not only understood, but the way that they're talked about in the media. And when we think about when Chris and Shanann first got together, she was very ill with lupus and she was heavily dependent on him. She thought he was her savior. 
And that's what she said. She couldn't have got by without him. So the relationship dynamic was very different. She was wholly dependent on him. They got married. She didn't know whether she could have children. And then by a miracle, because of lupus, she had two children, two girls. And then the relationship dynamic started to change. And she started to work more. And yes, they had debt. And that's another important point. But the dynamic shifted. And she was working. She was going out. She was no longer as dependent on him. And as you described, you know, the dynamic shift, and that can happen in a relationship, he then starts this Thrive program, which is something that she's advocating for as well as part of her business. And he starts to lose all this weight. And then he starts to feel himself more. And he's taking this introvert is now becoming someone quite different. Even Shanann Mm -hmm. said that she didn't know. He was taking videos Mm -hmm. of himself working out. And then he meets Nikki. And he falls for her hook, line and sinker. He's writing her these love notes at a time where Shanann is sensing that things are going terribly wrong in their relationship. And then she finds out she's pregnant. And maybe that pregnancy is used as a way to try and bring them closer. But of course, what we know is that babies don't tend to bring you closer. They tend to add more stress and pressure. And he, by other people's opinions, didn't want the baby. They had a gender reveal party that was cancelled and she sensed that he didn't want the baby. And even the video of them announcing the baby, he just clearly wasn't happy about the whole thing. And you can say he was shy on camera, but you can see that he was not excited about it. He cancelled this gender reveal. He was seeing Nikki. He wanted to invest in that relationship. He told Nikki that he had separated or was separating from Shanann which wasn't happening. And Shanann goes off, um, you know, she's writing these letters to him saying, I'll do anything to fix it. Tell me what you need, Chris. And he's withholding sex from her. He is completely out of the relationship and she's desperate to restore the relationship. And his attention is elsewhere. He's doing these Google searches. When do you tell someone that you're in love with them or how? Well, that tells you about shallow effect. It's not really a feeling. Mm because you just say it and you do it. You don't research it right. to understand it, right? So yes. that's the shallow well, effect. Well, what do, you, what do you make of his, this is my own antiquated notion of control. Uh, you know, I didn't feel like he was the one controlling because she's writing him these notes like, I've been gone for six weeks. You haven't, you've called me twice. You'd think a man would want to talk to his wife and daughters. And he writes back, you're so right. I'm so sorry. I love you, honey. I'll do better. All of his notes back during that six-week period, and this is all leading up to the murder. It's right before he murders them. He's, you know, he's using the emojis. He's really, you know, kind of sweet. Yes, he's ignoring her. But when he texts, it always seems to be from like a beta role. You know, that just how I read those texts. It, and the reason I found it alarming is it just didn't sound like someone who's going to go commit a murder. I don't know what somebody sounds like who's going to go commit a triple murder, but I just don't picture them using emojis. And so I, where am I going wrong? Well, they tend to be very cool, calm, and collected, actually. Every case I've seen, when we've had even CCTV footage of them in the act, it's cool, calm, and collected. Um, but where are you going, going wrong? I wouldn't say you're going wrong. You're interpreting what you're seeing, but my interpretation would be he's managing her, he's manipulating her, he's keeping her at arm's length, telling her what she needs to hear to get off his back because he's cheating on her. He's going sand dune surfing with Nikki. He Mm -hmm. clearly wants to be with Nikki. He's telling Nikki that he's going to leave Shanann. Nikki suspects he's cheating on her because as women, we know. We know the signs. We may not tell people about it, but Shanann actually did. She did go to that conference after that trip. And that's where she was when she came back at one o'clock or whatever it was. She had found that on her, on their credit card, because they didn't have much money, there was, I think it was something like $60 that the lazy dog had been spent. She believed it was, she was cheating. He was cheating on her. I believe that she came back to confront him because she came back early and her best friend said she wasn't herself. At the conference, she was just really out of sorts. She wasn't eating. She was really upset. And I believe she came back to confront him. And it's at the point of being confronted. He says that 
he pushed her off of him or he, yeah, he put, he got himself off of her. And I believe that they were having sex. There was some attempt to restore the relationship, but his account, he said, I told her I didn't love her and I didn't want to be with her anymore. And I pushed her away and I found my hands around her neck. Well, even that account is inauthentic because you don't just find your hands around someone's neck and it takes minutes, not seconds to strangle someone and, and asphyxiate them and kill them. And the girls were shadow sleepers. And I believe one of them came in and he took those decisions. That was all on him. And it may not have been someone that was something that was premeditated, but it unfolded. And the worst thing that he then did was put load Shanann into the car and load the two girls into the car. And he had 45 mm. minutes to make the right decision. But he took those two girls with their mother dead in the car and he then strangles them and asphyxiates them one by one and then disposes of their body as if they're rubbish, as if they're just trash. Look, you did the tough thing during COVID. You paid your people and you pulled your business through the pandemic. Now doing the tough thing could qualify you for up to 26,000 bucks per employee at covidtaxrelief.org. This is a great deal. And this money's already sitting there. It's not like you're tapping into some new tax fund they're going to create on other people. It's already been allotted. Government funds are available right now to reward companies with two or more employees who stayed open during COVID. It's not a loan. You don't have to pay it back. The program's complicated. No one knows more about it than the CPAs and tax experts at covidtaxrelief.org. You pay nothing up front. They do all the work and then share a percentage of the cash they get you. Businesses of all types, including nonprofits and churches, can qualify, including those who took PPP loans, even if you had an increase in sales. You did the tough thing for your employees during COVID. Let covidtaxrelief.org help get you up to $26,000 per employee. Visit covidtaxrelief.org. covidtaxrelief.org, covidtaxrelief.org. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.